Hi, this is Phil Shapiro. My friend Kim told me about this really nice scratch book, and I wanted to tell you about it. The title of the book is Coding Games in Scratch, a step-by-step -step visual guide to building your own computer games. And it's published by Dorling Kindersley out of the United Kingdom. So I know those folks, they publish some really nice books and they also publish from the old days, I remember their interactive um, CD-ROMs for early childhood that were so nice. Um, this is the back cover of the book. If you like playing computer games, why not create your own? This book has all you need to build thrilling racing uh, challenges, crazy platform games, and fiendish puzzles. Um, as you can see, it's re the use of color as, and design is really, really high quality. Um, the layout and stuff is very visually attractive. So I know Dorling Kindersley from my first incredible amazing dictionary. And this was an animated dictionary that was so playful. Uh, and I used to use this um, with elementary school students when I worked in the Arlington, Virginia public schools. Um, my first incredible, amazing dictionary, lovely, lovely software. Uh, I haven't seen it recently, but you can maybe hunt it down on eBay. It runs on old computers. I don't think it runs on new computers. Here is the author of the book, Dr. John Woodcock, has a degree in physics from the University of Oxford and a PhD in computational astrophysics from the University of London. Well, that sounds pretty easy to get. Anybody can get um, a degree in computational astrophysics. So um, he started coding at the age of eight and has programmed all kinds of computers. That's interesting. He's worked on numerous science and technology books. Um, here's the contents of the book. Uh, this is just one of the pages of the contents. So I think there's 12 different games in the book. And um, one of the things I really love about this book is that um, the publisher and the authors, they one of the purposes of writing the book is to create a culture of creative programmers. So it's not just teaching the skills, but creating the culture. So uh, I like this first chapter where it says, what makes a good game? Uh, it talks about the playability of a game and the atmosphere of a game and the different types of games. Um, so what makes a good game? Some games have a magical quality that makes you want to play them again. So this is really interesting. It's creating this kind of generalized uh, culture of creativity. The atmosphere, a good game, just like a movie or a book, can draw you in and change the way you feel by creating a certain atmosphere. Um, so very nicely done opening chapter. Um, very nicely done intro. How coding works. A computer can't think for itself. It works by blindly following instructions. Do you see the layout here is really gorgeous? in terms of color and um, it's very inviting to the eye. Lots of white space for you to rest your eye. It's not at all cramped or crowded. And this is a, a, just a scanned page from any page of the book that I found interesting. Um, placing the portals. Your game needs portals for the players to be able to progress through the levels. A portal is like a doorway that opens up when the player has completed a level. And um, so you can see the, the kind of graphics um, and then towards the end of the book, it comes back to the kind of theme of how do we create this culture of creativity? And there's suggestions like creating, holding a, a game jam. A game jam is a game making party. People get together for a day or two to race against time as they build a game from start to finish. Every year, countless game jams take place. Um, so why not hold a mini scratch jam at your home or school or public library or homeschool or wherever? Uh, pick a theme and ask a teacher or parent to help arrange computer access, judging, and prizes. So, very nicely done book. And then, of course, it's got an excellent glossary on top of everything else that's really good about this book. A very nice glossary. And this is just a, a section of the glossary. And um, the glossary is great because once students develop um, the language of computer programming, once they develop the facility in talking about computer programming, then that facility of talking about computer programming can be applied to whatever other computer languages they learn. So it's a kind of generalized thing. Um, I've read a lot of scratch books over the years, 
this has got to be one of the best. Um, uh, there are other excellent ones out there. This has got to be one of the best scratch books. Uh, if you found this book review interesting, you can find my other book reviews at sites.google.com slash site Phil Shapiro book reviews. I made the screencast with a free software called Simple Screen Recorder. I have a Lenovo laptop, a ThinkPad. I use Linux Mint. Uh, my audio is recorded to my Olympus Digital Audio Recorder. And I have a Logitech webcam. If you'd like to contact me, here's my contact information. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's an easy, no-cost way of vo voting, uh, voicing your support, right? Just subscribe to the YouTube channel. Anybody with a Gmail account can quickly set up their own YouTube account. You don't have to upload your own videos. If you have a YouTube account, you don't necessarily have to have a channel. You can just have a YouTube account and subscribe to other YouTube accounts, and that's a way of lending your support. Uh, and if you wanted to go beyond just uh, casual support, you can also support my book reviews. I have a Patreon website, and people can make a monthly contribution um, over there, even a very small contribution. It all adds up, right? It all adds up. And this is what my Patreon page looks like. It looks like this. Uh, Patreon.com slash Phil Shapiro. And um, so I love the fact that uh, people can make a very small contribution here. You don't have to make like $20 or uh, $50 or anything. You can just say, I'll give this person a dollar per month. Uh, and there's no shame in giving a small contribution because then maybe you can convince one of your friends to also make a dollar a month and then it all adds up, right? It all adds up. Uh, if a person has 500 or 800 or or 3,000 subscribers and they're each giving in a dollar or two dollars, well, it all adds up, right? It all adds up. Um, and this is the digital age. So we have to invent, we have to invent our new society. This is a new society we're walking into. We have to invent it and you can do your part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing a book review. You can choose to do your part, whatever your part is. And um, let me know what your part is. Maybe I'm going to be supporting you on your Patreon website. I do like to support other people. And uh, and sometimes I give them not a small amount of money because what their work they're doing is really, really important. And I'm so impressed with that person. So this is Phil Shapiro. Until next time.